This is Timnodontosaurus, a gigantic ichthyosaur from the early Jurassic of Western Europe. We always knew it was a predator, but exactly what it fed on and how it killed it has been less than crystal clear. Two scientific studies published just this year, the most recent just a few days ago, have shed new light and revealed very unexpected findings. And if you'd like to find out more, keep watching. Hi, I'm Professor Steve Rowe. I'm a paleontologist who does real paleontologist stuff like reconstructing fossils, naming new species, publishing dozens of scientific articles and supervising PhD students. I've even been known to get my hands dirty in the field. And this means that on this channel, you're watching real paleontology from a real paleontologist. And today we are talking Temnodontosaurus. Now, like I said at the top, Temnodontosaurus is an ichthyosaur, a giant marine reptile that lived during the age of the dinosaurs. Although, of course, it's not a dinosaur itself. It was actually the first ichthyosaur ever described, way back in 1817. There are seven known species, and these include some of the biggest ichthyosaurs. Temnodontosaurus platyodon here was the largest reaching lengths of 10 metres or 33 feet. Regarding its weight, though, I've scoured the peer-reviewed literature far and wide and have to say that I could not find a single estimate for this or any other member of the genus. I find this really surprising that no one's bothered to do this, but um, there you go. Now, like all ichthyosaurs, Hymnodontosaurus was clearly a highly proficient swimmer with a streamlined shape broadly reminiscent of a gigantic dolphin or sailfish. It also had humongous eyes around 26 centimetres in diameter. These would have allowed it to see in very low light conditions. Hymnodontosaurus had another trick up its sleeve, some super stealth tech, as revealed in a paper just published. I will cover this in more detail later, but if you're just busting to know, you can always skip ahead. Now, regarding what it ate and how, the morphology of its skull and teeth are, of course, the first place we paleontologists look. Historically, Temnodontosaurus and ichthyosaurs in general were thought to have been small prey specialists, largely subsisting on fish and especially squid, small enough to be swallowed whole. However, a growing body of evidence has suggested that at least some species were macro predators that included other marine reptiles, and even other ichthyosaurs in their diets. According to Benion and colleagues 2024 here, on the basis of skull and tooth shape, it's pretty clear that some species of Temnodontosaurus were way better equipped to tackle relatively large prey than others. At one end of the spectrum, we have Temnodontosaurus longirostris here, with very thin long jaws and relatively small pointy teeth, this is not the kind of kit you need to take out big prey. At the other end of the spectrum, we have Temnodontosaurus eurycephalus. Its relatively short, broad jaws and larger teeth fit the bill. In fact, the first specimen described of this species had what appears to have been a piece of skull belonging to another ichthyosaur stuck between its teeth, although this remains inconclusive. The skull of Temnodon Platyodon here sits somewhere in the middle. Probably the single most convincing piece of evidence that at least some ichthyosaurs were serious card carrying apex predators was presented in this 2020 paper by Jiang and friends. Here they describe the remains of a four metre long thalatosaur found in the stomach of a five metre long Guetzioichthyosaurus. There's no way that this was swallowed whole. It must have been torn into pieces before it was consumed. However, regarding Temnodontosaurus specifically, another even more recent study by Serafini and colleagues here, just this year, also presents solid evidence that another species, Temnodontosaurus trigonodont, was also a macro predator. This was based on the reanalysis of food items that were found in or that had passed through the digestive tract of a specimen from Germany. 
Long story short, the authors found that this large ichthyosaur had consumed smaller ichthyosaurs, all belonging to a species of Stenopterygius, and it hadn't just eaten one. It had eaten at least four babies, a juvenile and an adult. Most likely, these were taken in at least three separate predation events. The adult was certainly too large to have been swallowed whole. It had also eaten plenty of cephalopods and fish. Okay, so now let's talk about stealth. Here we are talking about the results from a study published just last week by Johan Lindgren and friends, where they described and analysed the 183 million year old flipper of a Temnodontosaurus trigonodon. Aside from the fact that it was really big, over a metre long, the remarkable thing about this flipper is that much of the soft tissue was preserved. The specimen was found in 2009 and had been lying around in a German museum for several years before scientists decided to take a closer look. When they did, they got a surprise. The flipper's trailing edge was clearly serrated and still closer inspection revealed that these serrations were reinforced by cartilage. This is really interesting because we know already that serrations can reduce sound. This has been widely demonstrated. For example, serrations are used to reduce noise produced by wind turbine blades, and serrated feathers are known to reduce sound generated by the wings of owls. Anyway, applying a form of digital modelling called computational fluid dynamics, they simulated water flow over the serrated flipper. The results strongly suggested that these serrations would have dampened sound too. The researchers further observed that the fleshy tip of the flipper didn't have any bones, only cartilage, which would have helped the animal move more efficiently, reducing drag. A picture emerges then of a gigantic owl of the sea, hunting in silent stealth mode with its huge eyes allowing it to pinpoint prey in near complete darkness. It seems very likely then that most victims of Temdonatosaurus would never have known what hit them. So, when you pull it all together, there really can be little doubt that Temnodontosaurus was a highly sophisticated animal with quite extreme adaptations to a predatory life in dimly lit seas. And at least some species were true super predators, filling the very highest trophic levels in their ecosystems. With that, I will conclude today's episode. If you enjoyed it, then please do me a favour and like and subscribe. It'll be much appreciated.